So our first speaker of the night is named Mary Young, and she is the CEO and designer of her namesake brand, Mary Young of Lingerie. And Mary used to play the violin and step dance at the same time. <laughs> Not sure how that works. Um, she grew up in a village of 50 people and three horses. And she has mastered falling asleep almost anywhere in under 60 seconds. Very cool. Mary, come on up here and share your fuck up. Thank you. I'm uh, very excited to share tonight. I don't think I'll be falling asleep because I'm going to be talking about one of my biggest mistakes, which, as you can imagine, is pretty nerve-wracking in a great way, I hope. Um, so I am Mary, but I also go by a different name that I did not give myself. I was thankfully given it to uh, me throughout the past probably five years since starting my business. I would walk into restaurants, cafes, parties, and people would say, hey, I think I know you. Aren't you that underwear girl? <laughs> and people would come to me like, don't you have a lot of underwear? And it was strange to be known as that underwear girl, but here I am. I am that underwear girl. I never knew that I would be producing underwear at mass quantities for other people, but it has been very exciting. I did know that I always wanted to be an entrepreneur from a very young age before I knew what word entrepreneur was or what that meant. I knew I wanted to be my own boss, and this is the face of a young entrepreneur. <laughs> So this is me when I realized I really wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was full of excitement, as you can see, my eyes and my pupils are very dilated. Um, I was full of anticipation. There's also some fear hiding in that lovely bowl cut I have. And I was definitely naive, but these are some four great qualities that make an entrepreneur, and this was me. And so when I think about my biggest fuck up, I think, well, I have a lot. I had to sit down, go through which ones made me cry the most, which ones made me scared the most, and which ones I learned from the most. So tonight, I'm going to be sharing one that I learned the most from and I definitely cried the most from. And it is actually with, to do with Nordstrom. So as anyone in retail, you want to get into a big name store. And for me, the holy grail of retail was Nordstrom. And years and years of planning and pursuing and chasing and cold emailing and cold calling finally led me to getting into Nordstrom. Late spring last year, I got the email that everyone waits for with a big PO for 11 retail locations for Nordstrom. This was not something that happened overnight. I would love to say, I put it out in the universe and I just you know, made it happen and I got the email and it was really great. This was years of going on LinkedIn, finding buyers, making up email addresses, sending them, getting the bounce back, trying again, finally figuring out what their email format was, getting in touch with the right buyer, and then also chasing down said buyer at a trade show so I could have just a few minutes of her time to explain my amazing, awesome brand. Thankfully, she believed it, and she ended up writing a PO for me. And so I got that PO, and I thought, this is it. This is gonna be the big day that changes the rest of my career, and obviously, the rest of my life. So once I got that PO, time started to really slow down. It was nine weeks from the day I got the PO to when it was supposed to ship and arrive at the 11 different stores across North America. So I was going through paperwork, which as anyone knows, paperwork's not really that fun, but it was a lot of paperwork and a lot of different negotiations, a lot of back and forth, and then a lot of rushing to get production done in time to make it to all the different warehouses across North America. But I was sure I had it. You know, This was something I had been working for and I knew this was going to be obviously really, really amazing. So as the time's leading up, I'm stressed. I feel like I'm holding in a really tight inhale for weeks on end, but it's gonna be okay, I'm gonna get there. And I'm almost there. It's the last day, I'm sitting on ups.com, I'm watching the tracking, I'm waiting for it to arrive. I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm finally going to have my product in Nordstrom. All of my hard work is finally gonna to come to life. And that's when things sort of shifted for me. So to paint a picture, everything actually did get to every warehouse in time. Fun fact, there was no cancellations, there was no, it got lost at the border, we've never seen the boxes since, which actually can happen. So thankfully I saw it arrived at all the warehouses. As anyone does, you see that, you're like, okay, it's time to celebrate. Maybe it's not on floor yet, but it's in the hands of Nordstrom. So as anyone does, and as I do, I went to go buy myself something because I just did something really amazing and I wanted to treat myself. So to paint the picture for you, I'm walking back from the Eaton Center with a lovely bag in hand full of brand new sneakers because the best way to celebrate is obviously new shoes. 
And I was like, this is great. New shoes, gonna walk on air for the rest of my life, doing the best that I can possibly do. And I get a little ding in my hear edf- headphones as I'm walking down the street and go, oh, that's, a, that's an email, it's weird. I put my out of office on, so I wasn't supposed to be getting any emails. And I look at it and the subject line says, urgent. I'm like, ooh, it's not, a, it's not a subject line anyone really wants to see. And then I realize it's from Nordstrom, from their legal team. And that's also not something anyone really ever wants to see. And I'm going, ooh, okay, so an email from Nordstrom, from the legal team. So I'm standing on the north side of Queen Street, just east on, of University. The sun is spilling down. It's a hot July day. I think this is going to be the best weekend of my life. And I open the email, and there's a big, big problem. And they're threatening to send every single unit back and not pay for any single unit that I just stressed over for the past nine weeks. So I really did think my world was crumbling down in front of me. I definitely was standing there at Queen and University, and I still get kind of goosebumps when I walk by. being like, oh, I remember that time. And I really thought, this is going to be it. This is actually going to be the end of my life. And to preface, outside of business, my personal life wasn't going so well. So that's why it was even harder for me to get an email with bad news. If your personal life is, you know, smooth, sailing along, you can kind of take those curveballs that come at you. But my personal life was not necessarily in the best place. I had been dealing with a lot of different sicknesses throughout the beginning of 2018. Basically, I was just sick the entire year with a cold or a flu, or cold and a flu, and then not sure, but the doctor said, just keep trying to take more vitamins. So I had been really sick for months, coughing, chest pain, waking up to chest pain, ear infections, so on and so forth. So I physically was not doing well. And then on top of that, in my personal life with my family, there was more sickness. So my mother actually got married a few months earlier. And then we recently found out, just a few months after they got married, that my stepfather was diagnosed with cancer. For anyone hearing that, that's not a great word. It's not a great diagnosis. For me personally, it was even heavier than it would be for most. My mom had been diagnosed with cancer eight years previous. Thankfully, she's in remission and is great now. So that brought back a lot of feelings of, oh wow, I remember the time my mom got diagnosed and how hard of a battle that was. And also, my father had dealt with sickness his entire life and unfortunately didn't beat his illnesses. So I have seen two parents deal with sicknesses and suddenly my new stepfather, which should be a very exciting time, made made me realize that anything bad and anything good can happen, but you never know what's gonna happen. So personally, I was dealing with a lot. I was going through a lot of my own terms, my own health, and health of my family. And then when this came, I thought, there's no way that I can recover from what's happening. So what happened is something very, very small. We have content labels in all of our clothes. Everything you're wearing has a content label. Ours in bra and underwear is very, very small. It's less than an inch long and less than a half inch wide because it's small products. On the content, we put the content of the fabric. So for us, it's rayon from bamboo which, as you can see, these are bamboo stalks. Bamboo stalks are not rayon from bamboo. Because our tags are so small, we just put bamboo. We simplize it, we don't have as much words because we really don't have enough space. And in Canada, that's fine. You can say 95% bamboo, 5% elastane, which is what we had been doing for years. But I did not do my research and see how things changed in America. Because as we know, America and Canada are not the same. Our laws and our regulations, thankfully, are not the same. So unthankfully, this one was something I did not prepare for. I did not realize you could not shorten it down and have just bamboo. And because of that, they could not sell any of the product. They could not put it on floor, they could not put it on their website, and they would have to send it back to me to fix and to get it back to them in time to be on all their floors for the eight week long pop-up that we had agreed to. This is day two of those eight weeks. If they were to send everything back, get it relabeled, and then I was to ship it back to all the different locations, it would be about week six of week eight, which means not much time for selling, and then they actually wouldn't want it back. So they were threatening to just ship everything back, call it quits, and say, nope, enough is enough. And as any creative entrepreneur, I don't really take no for an answer. So I became very, very focused on solving the problem. This was me for days on end reading, rereading all the regulations, seeing if there's any loopholes, how fast could I ship things back, how fast could I get things printed and repaired, and I realized I'm going to figure out a solution. I'm not going to miss out on the holy grail of retail and not end up in Nordstrom. So I found a solution. The second tag that's our content tag is thankfully behind our logo, so you can 
cut it out really small and no one will see that there was a tag there. And then with a sticker, I can just slap the sticker on the paper hang tag that has the right content and ta-da, solution. So thankfully Nordstrom agreed to having their staff do this on my behalf so they didn't have to send everything back across the border. So everyone at all the different warehouses cut out the tag, stuck it on, and it all solved the problem. But this was because of a lot of creative thinking. And finally, I could walk into Toronto Nordstrom and see us hanging at the store, which is pretty amazing because this is something that I literally had dreamed of since that young girl you saw at the beginning. That face was the face I had when I walked in Nordstrom, and it made it into 11 locations around North America as well as online. So to be able to come through all of that and to see that it finally happened was pretty amazing. What's also really amazing is as that was happening, my stepfather met with a new oncologist who had a really great plan to attack his cancer and to treat him, and he's still going through that and he's doing really well. And at the same time, I finally pushed my doctor to do some more tests because I was convinced something was wrong, and turns out I had walking pneumonia for three months and just didn't know it. So thankfully, I got a lot of great news at a very short amount of time when a lot of bad things were just happening. So now if you look at me today as an entrepreneur, this is really the face you will see. Still full of anticipation, a lot of excitement, always a little bit of fear, and one thing that I think is really great is always being naive. When you're naive, you think your idea is the greatest. You think that you can solve any problem. And when you're faced with fuck up after fuck up after fuck up, you have to be naive to think, well, it's not gonna stop you and it's really not gonna ruin your life. So as an entrepreneur, you need to be able to be agile. To be any, anything in life, you actually need to be able to be agile. Life will throw many different curveballs at you, good, bad, ugly, and you'll have fuck up after fuck up, and you need to be able to get back up and keep going and realize that your world is actually not crumbling down in front of you. Thank you. Mary, thank you so much for sharing that story. Um, I think it just goes to show that like creative thinking and creative sol problem solving could really like get you out of a bind. So really congratulations on being able to do that and congratulations on all of your success so far. And I'm sure it's only the start of it. Thank you. So let's open it up to some Q&A for Mary. Uh, we have a couple of mic runners who are gonna come to you with a mic. And um, actually one thing, before you ask your question, um, just please make sure that the question itself is brief so we can get through as many as possible. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, very inspirational. Just a brief question is, how did you buy the time to take this couple days and do this research and creative thinking? Like, what did you tell them in that email? So thankfully, the email came in on a Friday afternoon, so I automatically had the weekend because the legal team hates working on weekends. Um, but what I told them is we were going to have a solution that would save them time and save them money, and it wouldn't be at their cost. And so they really liked that because it wasn't anything to do with them having to pay for the mistake. I think that was the biggest thing that they read in the email. And then thankfully, by Monday afternoon, I presented them two different solutions. And I laid out which one I thought was the most cost and time effective, and that's the one they ended up going with. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, one in the back here. Hey, thanks for sharing your, your story. Were there any uh, solutions that kind of hit the, hit the cutting room floor that, uh, that were bad ideas that, that didn't make it? Oh yeah, there was uh, <laughs> plenty of solutions. There was, I was going to go to each individual warehouse <laughs> and sit there and sew the new tags in because obviously I can fly across the country and do that in just a short few days. Um, there was meeting you know, the packages at the border also so they wouldn't have to come across the border. That did not work. Um, so it really came down to being the most cost effective and time effective because it was a short span that we were supposed to be selling through Nordstrom and I wanted to make sure that we were on the floor as long as possible. And thankfully I didn't have to go across North America to each warehouse. Uh, first off, amazing story uh, in terms of the resilience of dealing with something like that that's obviously just smacked you upside the head. Um, 
but I'm actually quite curious, how do you fall asleep in 60 seconds anywhere? Yes. That's a really great question because I used to have really bad sleeping problems my, literally my entire life from childhood to I think 23 or 24. Um, techniques that I used then were, you know, different sounds and, you know, those different soothing sounds you fall asleep. I used to count backwards. I used to count backwards in French. I used to count to a thousand, a thousand in French. I used to skip numbers. So it was a lot of counting to try to confuse my mind. Um, now I would say because I've become so busy as an entrepreneur, if I get sleep, my body will grasp onto it as fast as possible. So the key is just exhaustion. Yeah, basically just be exhausted. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. good, good, good. Hey, uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, I have a question uh, regarding the, um, when was like your aha moment and, uh, and who is, uh, what was like your support system like for friends or like who do you come to to get like different perspective on uh, to come up with a solution? Yeah, so my support system, I don't know if they wanted to be my support system or not, but a lot of my friends who thankfully work in the industry, I talked to them about um, what it was like on their end. So a few of them worked for other big chain stores and different solutions they've seen in tagging because it was about being creative with how to hang that tag. So I talked to a few different people. When I was reading the regulations, it stated that the tag had to be securely attached during purchase but could be removed after. So I knew it couldn't be something that would be pinned on or something that could be, you know, fall off when it's hanging on a, a clothes rack. And um, that weekend was a lot of crying and a lot of like not breathing properly. And I think my mom got the brunt of that, unfortunately. But it was a lot of just talking to people, and I reread the same, you know, section of the regulations honestly two or three hundred times. And I think after I read it the last time, I realized, oh, I could put a sticker on something because the sticker would be securely attached to the paper tag that is plastic gunned to the garment itself. So that was, all those slow steps came together and it was just, sometimes you read something for the third, fifth, 20th time and then something clicks. So it's just not giving up and trying to always move around uh, whatever you're going through and try to find a different angle to get in and find the solution. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm just curious. So how did you do in those that six weeks? pop-up at Nordstrom? We did really well. So we did, actually did better in the States than we did in Canada. So there's only two stores. It was Vancouver and Toronto. Uh, and we sold most, I think it was 80%, sold 80% through in all the U.S. locations and only 65% in Canada, which is kind of surprising because we're Canadian made and Canada knows about us more. Uh, but I think it was because it was newer product in these uh, key cities in the U.S. And then they also sold the remainder online. Hey, how was your relationship with Nordstrom after the fact? Were you trying to continually put your product line in there, or what, how did that go? So thankfully, our relationship is still really good. Um, the buyer that I was working with was for special events, so they really focused on those short-term pop-ups. I have spoken with the lingerie buyer at Nordstrom, and it's been a discussion back and forth, but as more of a niche brand that isn't sort of your everyday lingerie, we don't necessarily fit into what they're offering. It was easier to have us on like almost display and have more marketing towards us versus being um, like directing their customers to the third floor in the very back corner where they're not really going to find us. And it wouldn't be as beneficial for us to have our messaging and our mission um, explained properly if it's just sort of shoved in the back corner. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, I was wondering if your current self could go back to yourself last year, what kind of encouraging words would you offer for yourself? I would probably tell myself to breathe. Um, I have this idea in my mind that everything really is the end of the world. So I definitely, you know, just think this is it for me. And I was like, the company's done. We're going to have to close. I don't know how I'm going to put out the press release that says we're out of business. So I go from zero to 100 very quick. Um, I would definitely walk through myself, um, through the steps, and realize that there is always a solution, whether it's a solution you want it to be, whether it's more time consuming or spending more money, but just reassuring myself that there will be a solution that won't cause more problems. If it hadn't worked out. Yeah. What would happen? Well, looking back on it, sometimes, you know, there is a solution. And yes. sometimes the solution Some doesn't happen in mm -hmm. time. So I guess I wonder about how kind you would be to yourself if it hadn't worked out. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be that kind. Uh, as, I, as I stated, I have this tendency to make the worst of everything. I also am very hard on myself. 
Um, I definitely wouldn't have closed the business. I think that was me being very dramatic. But it would have been a long couple of months trying to sell off that product. So what I likely would have done is contacted all of our other retailers, asked them if they'd be interested in you know, stocking this product and maybe giving them a discount to give them an incentive so that I could get rid of that inventory, maybe putting it online, putting it on sale, again, being creative with how can I move those units. Um, but it definitely, it comes back to as an entrepreneur, you're, you're easy on other people, you're easy on your team, but you're very rarely easy on yourself. So it's having that, um, that conversation with yourself to take yourself off the ledge, basically. Okay, so we're gonna do one last question. Hi, uh, thank you for letting me not only take the last uh, question, but uh, also for allowing me to say a question. I mean, this uh, give and take, great, beautiful thing. Um, I was wondering, uh, how many kind of like um, sales opportunities, right, did you have to go through to, um, to get uh, Nordstrom? A lot. Uh, I would say from our very first year of operation through to when I got Nordstrom, we had been in many other retailers, some the si similar size. We we're already in Holt Renfrew in Canada, so sort of on par with what Nordstrom is, just the smaller version. Uh, one of the best things that helped was going to that trade show because you can cold email, you can try to call, but once you have that face-to-face -face conversation, it's harder from uh, for you know that that person or that buyer to walk away from you. So I think that really helped us. And it was also just being um, resilient and not giving up. If I wanted to be a Nordstrom, that was my goal. And whether it happened at the time it did or it didn't, and I would have pushed for it to happen later, that was something that was always on my checklist. Awesome, thank you so much. Great questions, everyone. And thank you, Mary, for sharing your story.